What's going on, guys, and welcome to episode 66 of the Thoughtful Banter Podcast. I'm your host, Matthew, with my co-host, Hussein. Yes, sir. And it's crazy. We're already on episode 66. This episode is sponsored by the patrons you see on the screen. If you guys want more behind-the-scenes exclusive content, you want to support the channel, make sure to check out our Patreon page. It will be the link down below, uh, patreon.com forward slash Thoughtful Banter. Uh-huh. Ramallah Mubarak, everyone. Obviously, you guys who follow the channel know that we started fasting and then the ones who are Muslim obviously been fasting with us. We're in the last, like, I think we're in the second to last day of Ramadan, inshallah, if the moon is sighted on uh, Tuesday night, <coughs> which is like a high, pretty high probability that we'll be able to see the moon with a naked eye Tuesday night and then Wednesday will be Eid. Um, so these we're approaching like the last couple of days of Ramadan. Before we kind of get into, you know, basically how our Ramadan vibes have been, because that's one of the things we want to go over in this episode, I do want to allow Matthew the chance to clear his name. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because he posted a very specific... (laughs) (laughs) Let me speak on this. on his story. Let me speak on this. (laughs) I just want to make the record very clear for the Oma, for all of my Instagram followers who follow me at Matthew Films on Instagram. Um, I am not gay. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so what happened was the the provider so cl- I completely forgot about that. <laughs> so one of my friends sent me this flyer for this event. It was like um, Ramadan Mubarak, like E Kareem for mm. Ramadan, and it was a flyer for an Eid event, and the event is being hosted by something queer like queer Muslims or something DC Muslim D- DC queer Muslims something like that yeah so I thought it was funny because I'm like how are y'all DC queer so like Muslims? so like just to give you some like background the same friend sent it to me and he was making a joke and he was like haha they forgot to include your name on the flyer <laughs> <laughs> like, like he didn't say that to me he didn't send it to me the flyer that's funny yeah uh-huh. so this is some like some background anyways continue so yeah yeah so I guess sent this flyer and I'm like dude that's so funny because I'm sorry it's just I don't care what you believe in. That's just ironic. It's just the irony is too is too funny. Yeah, it's a little oxymoronic too. Yeah. I post it on my private story, and I just say, "See y'all there." <laughs> I wake up and I haven't been like I've been trying to be less active on Instagram because it's like Ramadan, right? So you know, like I think like a day goes by. I don't think it's on my story anymore. And I check my DMs, and I just have like a couple of brothers who are like, "Bro, what is this, bro?" <laughs> like, like they're not joking. They're like, "Brother." Brother, why are you posting this? <laughs> or like, or like you, so I could tell some comments were like confused or trying to give me a benefit. They're like, ha ha ha, why are you posting that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if I should be offended. Like, y'all think I'm gay, you know I'm married. Like, I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, in their defense, it doesn't necessarily mean that you yourself are gay. It could mean you're just supporting. So see y'all that's there. Probably, that's probably where the questions were coming from. I got to see who knows me and who, yeah, yeah, and who yeah, doesn't yeah, yeah. know me. Because <laughs> even some guys who I've known a little bit longer than other guys, they were confused. And a couple guys who only met like a couple times, like Madafa vibes, mm-hmm. they're dying. Like no, <laughs> I'm, bro, I, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure you could you could draw. Uh, look at the moosh, An- another moosh, bro. Yo, we, that's gross. Get us out, get us out this hood, man. Get us Anyways. out the trap house. Go to our Patreon. Anyways, I'm pretty sure you can, as I was saying before, I th- I'm pretty sure if you draw like a dividing line, not draw, but like make a dividing line between like millennial and Zoomer, most of the Zoomers will have gotten the post and then most of the millennials would have been like, what is this, bro? <laughs> so it's sort of a whole discussion. I guess this is what we're talking about now. I don't mind. It's sort of a whole discussion, right? Because we have like a group chat, me, Hussein, and a friend of ours mm-hmm. um, who's like of the older, like a little bit older generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a millennial. And he's a millennial. And he was... Um, you know, we're we're talking about the whole thing with him, and he was like one of the guys who was like a little bit confused, right? Mm. Um, so, and he was just saying like, you know, like maybe we just take it a little bit more seriously that we see like this LGBT issue is like something that's like Oma spread wide, biggest like one of the biggest issues that impact the Oma. And I was just like, no, nah, it's that was just a meme, bro. Like it's not that <laughs> yeah, deep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get, I get. I, I mean, like you don't have to tell me, but I'm pretty sure. No, they were millennial. Yeah, like yeah, uh, yeah. most of the people who had like, like, why are you doing this questions were millennials. And most of people were like, haha, so <laughs> funny. We're Zoomers. Yeah. No, we have some uh, world uh, geopolitical uh, analysis going down here. Not really analysis. I don't know anything. I'm getting my news off Twitter. Um, what was it? Last week, um, Israel bombed the Iranian embassy in Syria. 
um, which is crazy. Yeah, that I've, like that's like, yeah. It's just like, and I'm like, I'm saying like that's just crazy. But like, if an embassy gets bombed, so if y'all like, if anyone here who's stupider than me is watching, I'll just explain. Like, in, if embassy is considered, if you have an embassy somewhere that 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 place land, is considered that's land of the country that has the embassy. Yeah. So like an act of any act of violence on an embassy is an act of violence on the country. Yeah, because that that plot of land or whatever that's on, that's a piece of Iran, basically. Yeah. So um, if, Syria, if yeah. you're bombing anyone's embassy, you're bombing them, mm-hmm. you know, in essence, at least like in, in spirit. Like you're, it's really like a big old F you. Um, so Syria bombs, uh, Israel bombed Iran's embassy that was in Syria. It's just so out of pocket. Like Israel cannot help itself. Right, so I'm, I'm just like uh, on Twitter. I don't know if you've been keeping up with it. No, I really haven't. I was gonna you, you're gonna pretty much have to take the lead on this topic because I'm not super uh, well read on it. I mean, I'm not super either. I just wanted, to, I just felt like it need to get addressed. But it's just really interesting right now because I've never before in my life thought that I would see like the overall opinion on Israel in like the Western world be so much this direction of people kind of being like really fed up, mm-hmm. you know, <coughs> like. And pro-Palestinian, not just, like, fed up. Because there, p- there are people who are, like, fed up, like, hey, maybe we should stop giving so much money to Israel. Mm-hmm. Maybe we should stop giving so many weapons to Israel. But Israel also completely justified it X, Y, Z. Yeah, yeah. Against. But it's not just, like, a neutrality or, like, hey, maybe we should be, like, less interventionalist as Americans. It's, like, a marked increase in the amount of pro-Palestinian sentiment that I've been seeing just from, like, normies. Not even yeah. like <laughs> not just normies. Not even like um, you know, people who are in this. Yeah, not even know. like Muslims or Arabs or whatever, yeah. right? It's just like even people who are like Jewish or people who believe in like quote unquote Israel having the right to exist, right? Like the way the Israel the way the Israeli government administration is handling the situation, it is so stupid for them, for their own cause, because they are in such an echo chamber of extremism. That's all it is. Like, it's like, imagine if ISIS had a country. Like, that's what it is, except for their religion, honestly. Mm. They're in such an echo chamber of extremism that they don't hear how crazy they sound. Like, they're just like, yeah, it's like, we killed 10,000 children, but, you know, they're, they're going to be Hamas anyways, right? So it's like, all of this stuff happened with Palestine that's all being documented. People are like, uh, Israel, we're losing more points, losing more yeah, points. And then yeah. the seven civilians... The seven mm-hmm. aid workers got killed who were Americans and uh, British citizens. And, you know, America, we don't we don't really care about people who are American. When you kill American, it's like all lies on you. Right. So now now you've killed Americans. Now you've killed, you know, um, our allies, people. And everyone's looking at Israel like you're causing a lot of trouble, bro. You're yeah, not doing much yeah. for us. I mean, like even the things <laughs> yeah. they, they come out and say just like with a straight face. I mean, we were talking <laughs> of the car the other day, like these generals of the IDF. Yeah. You know, they're just coming out and being like, yeah, when we target Hamas, um, when we when we have information about Hamas targets and we want to kill them, a lot of times we do it when they're at home. So it's like, OK, on the one hand, you're using this argument that, oh, no, Hamas always hiding behind people using human shields. And on the other hand, you're saying you specifically target these people when they're in the comfort in their home around their family who might not be Hamas. Right? Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the curtain is definitely getting pulled back. People yeah. are seeing it. And again, like they're just doing it to themselves. Like if they were even smarter psychopaths, they would be more careful. But they're just so arrogant about. The yeah, I mean, even themselves. as far as I understand, like Netanyahu who's not super well liked by anyone in Israel outside of like a group of very, 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 very far right extremists in Israel, even like the moderate or like the far left Israeli is pretty genocidal or at least more genocidal <laughs> than you'd expect. <laughs> than the average person per se. Yeah, than like should be. Yeah. But um, I think it says something that like even his people among his people, he's pretty much on the outs, like sentiment wise. Yeah. And I'm, I'm seeing like these trends, right? And then like you see like, yeah, I don't know, you remember like Biden after the State of the Union, his okay, hot so mic. He's like talking about how much, he's like, hey, I hate that guy. <laughs> I hate that dude, Netanyahu. Yeah, like and there's like, so, like call him an a-hole. Like yeah. he's just, he's such a, he's such a hard headed dude. Like I hate talking with him. I um, mean, I'm sure Netanyahu like feels something similar, but it's just interesting. Like a lot of this stuff is shifting. You bring up a very good point, and uh, that actually leads uh, me to I'm seeing like different, you know, White House representatives. Basically, we're 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 again like the waves are are happening. Made, yeah. They are being made to the point where we ha- we're hearing like government officials not just continue to just say the exact same thing. Where it's like Israel, no matter what, 
we're hearing we're hearing uh, White House people say stuff like, you know, like we'll only be able to support Israel if they're able to work on a ceasefire, something like that. So, I know we're winning because Ben Shapiro is mad. Alhamdulillah, I love to see this man angry. This man Ben Shapiro tweets. Should I do his voice? I'll read it normally. Uh, the Biden administration. The, Bi- the, Biden am- <laughs> the Biden administration is now effectively preparing to make aid to Israel contingent on dot 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 unspecified changes to Israeli policy, which means that Israel can do little or nothing to appease the White House. Hamas is now in control of Biden administration. <laughs> you are absolute bloody madman, Ben. You're so crazy. Um, Dude, it's like straight cope. Like I, I <clears throat> It's all cope. Ben just like such a it's it's so clearly cope too because like this isn't an IQ problem by any means like Ben can be so logical and analytical about things that are far away from home you get to the Holy Land <sighs> <laughs> you know so I'm uh I'm just you know for me the way I'm looking at it, right it's like I see a guy like Ben Shapiro who's like a big old Zionist defender on the front lines of like the intellectual war field um him being upset means things might be moving in the right direction um and then yeah what do you think um you know who he wouldn't be upset to have in the white house hmm. especially on this issue hmm. trump anyways um that's all no that's, that's a all, great point that's all i'm gonna say yeah because you know like there's these uh well i think we talked about before right there's like this whole i don't know how i haven't researched it recently since we mm. last talked about it, but like there's in like that whole movement of muslims yeah especially like in michigan or whatever yeah the co- the uncommitted mm-hmm. so what is it right it's like they're they're hoping to vote for trump to make the democrats lose to hurt the democrats no I don't, I don't think those people are even voting um which is like completely completely understandable like again i don't think i mean i've talked about this so many times before on, on this podcast but like i don't think anyone has to vote if, if you're just not gonna vote that's fine if you're someone who voted and you're not and you're abstaining from this vote because you think it doesn't matter then then i think you're a little bit of an idiot because like there seems to be a (laughs) there seems to be a difference between like a a a a a tangible recordable empirical difference between biden and trump especially on their stance stances towards israel so if you're Mm -hmm. someone who thinks that voting matters and then now you're you're not voting because you're like, oh, well, both of them are just as bad as each other. Then I think you're an idiot. <laughs> but if you just don't vote, if you just ne- well, <laughs> you th- never But I voted. think that's the thing, though. There is like that. I've heard people saying mm-hmm. that, that that's what they're going to do. Where like I've heard like different. Like, oh, pe- and like you've heard people say that you're gonna, they're going to vote. They're going to vote for uh, Trump. Yeah. Like I've no, heard that's even like that's even like saying, that's a thousand times more stupid. That's the stupidest thing <laughs> <That's like laughs> you could possibly yeah, do. Like, like I don't think I think people need to like jog their memory. Like because when Trump was in office, he literally ch- he literally. Uh, change Israel's capital for them, right? And like, the this embassy, guy does not the like Muslims. location of the embassy. Location of the embassy. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then like you can just see his like his statements on Israel um, is like, yeah, Hamas complete, should be completely eradicated. We should give them more money. We should give them more weapons. <laughs> if you know what's bad, because Netanyahu himself actually wants Trump to be back in power. This is like a recorded thing. Yeah. Right. So, like, hmm, I wonder why Netanyahu would want Trump back in power over Biden. Like, yeah. this is not difficult to, this is, really, this is really not difficult to freaking, like, parse through and look at. And then I think, so, and here's why the pr- people voting for Biden, for Trump, are even, like, stupider than the people who are just not voting, but previously thought that voting mattered. It's because when I look at someone who's not voting, I'm like, yeah, you're right, your vote doesn't matter. Like, again, you have, and this is old data, but you have, like, a, a, a uh, 17 times more likely chance of getting struck by lightning than being the deciding vote in an election, like the tie-breaking vote in an mm-hmm. election, right? So, like, on the, in the grand scheme of things, if you're talking about difference-making, your vote probably doesn't make – your singular vote doesn't probably doesn't make that big of a difference. So you're right, even if your your logic is wrong, right? But, like, if you're just voting for Trump, then you're just an idiot because <laughs> all you have to do is look at what he said. Like, I don't understand. I don't understand how the argument is like, I'm going to make things better. I don't know. I just don't understand the argument. I'm going to I'm going to advance the cause by making it worse for everyone who I'm trying who I'm advocating for. Like yeah. I, I just don't understand the logic. It's cope, and I and I under I understand the cope, uh, but it's just it's just not going to help out the Palestinians or or anyone. Yeah, um, and and like these people are like I'm seeing like 
on Twitter. There's people like, well, you shouldn't have to navigate and negotiate um, morality. There should just be some red lines. That's why you shouldn't vote for either one. And I'm just like, in an ideal world, maybe. in an ideal, in an ideal world, I agree. But the principle of harm reduction is not like, is not a foreign concept Islamically. It's not a foreign concept like, just in every everyday ethics that we learn in school. Like the 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 idea of harm reduction is not is not foreign. Um, plenty of fatawa have been written with the maslaha of harm reduction in mind. I was about to say, like, so much of what we do in terms of, like, if you like, look at scholars explain the fiqh or something, it's like, we're not entirely sure if it's halal, so we're just going to say, it's not halal because what harm is in us never doing it? Mm. None. Versus potential harm in us doing a thing. Now, I think if you want to make an argument about, you know, the the calculability of like the harm reduction and stuff like that like okay that 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 is more convincing to me but like i haven't seen i don't think just saying the argument of like straight up oh well any kind of harm reduction is we shouldn't be engaging in is stupid because they're both bad is just silly yeah it's, it's just really silly um that's my spiel on um on you know voting and no, <laughs> i i agree and i'm um, actually back to harm reduction um funny enough i i totally skipped over something uh we should have talked about back to the um embassy attack on iran people are saying what's iran gonna do iran's tweeting iran's tweeting and it's yeah. like <laughs> iran's always tweeting iran's <laughs> always tweeting and it's like i don't know i don't think you guys understand like when trump pulled the trigger to kill iran's general right which is a complete act of war is completely unprecedented um, attack like illegal on so many different levels like internationally yeah. illegal <laughs> um, and uncalled for to say the least right um, really nothing happened I- Iran Iran bombed a uh, empty military base in Iraq um, an empty like American military base but it was just an empty base and they had a, uh, they had, had some kind of like intelligence or prior notice before so like I think you were supposedly. Saying, I think that's what Trump I said. That's what he's saying. a bad or, or orator, right? Oh, but, okay, okay, okay. So that's I don't Trump's know. Trump yeah, said yeah. Iranians called me. No, no, that's that's different than them having intelligence, though. Yeah, yeah, they um, can have intelligence of an attack without Trump saying. You know, I don't believe Trump that someone literally called him was like, "Hey, bro, we're gonna." <laughs> but I can believe that they had some kind of intelligence. I wouldn't be surprised at the same time because, like, again, like you have to think from Iran's perspective. Like, again, this is again like geopolitical here. Like, Iran definitely wants the smoke right but iran cannot handle the smoke mm-hmm. um iran so do they want the smoke yeah like i think iran wants to be able to handle the smoke mm. right but they're I just, agree. yeah they're I not mean, in that position yeah, yeah you know any like enemy of the u.s is pretty much in that but po- anyone anyone who can't like hang so if you're not like china and, like maybe russia yeah. in certain in certain circumstances right <laughs> even them like even like really it's just china russia really is like we just clobber yeah um it's like i don't even think iran wants smoke with the states i think iran just really wants smoke with israel like it's just right there mm-hmm. and they're just like bro please mm-hmm. um so it kind of feels like people are saying israel is taunting iran because they really want the u.s to pull in their troops to just take care of hamas and iran and if you know if iran goes in the lebanon you know so you're but gonna take care of putting, all of our enemies at not once putting boots on the ground in israel that would be like the dumbest, dumbest thing, thing we ever did well, <laughs> well that's well that's a, these are serious conversations that have been had i'm sure right especially like when all of this kind of first started and iran was saying like you know but iran didn't of course and mm-hmm. to all the people who are always saying iran's gonna do something iran's not gonna do anything because unless it was like the perfect opportunity for them because again like america bro if you look at the map like maps of like u.s military bases and then iran like iran is a really small country like bro isn't like <laughs> texas bigger than iran or just about i think texas is a little bit smaller but it's very close to the size mm-hmm. like to put it in perspective like it it it, it is what it is yeah like, yeah. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know so um iran's not gonna be able to do anything to israel if um, as long as America still supports Israel, and that's never going to stop happening. But what I'm curious about is, like, if Israel keeps going down this line of just making really stupid political decisions, like really yeah. bad PR moves. I was going to say, this might be, like, a, a pretty well, like, if something does happen, if some kind of retaliation does happen by Iran, it might be pretty well timed. Yeah. Um, just given how sick people, even people in the White House are getting of Israel. Yeah, like, yeah, um, may- maybe. 
maybe not pull in. Like it also, I don't, I don't think even, uh, even if Iran did like, I don't, I don't, I don't know the military capacities of Iran. I'm, I don't know. <coughs> I find it hard to believe that if the full might of Iran's military pulled into Israel, that immediately we would be dropping boots on the ground in Israel. I don't know. I mean, I think we have so many. Like literally, I don't know. My to be fair, to be fair, to be fair. It doesn't take a lot to be a better army than the IDF. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm serious. I'm not even being yeah, like. Yeah. I'm not even joking. They're like some of the most undisciplined, like, wildly behaving, yeah, like militaries that I've ever witnessed. Yeah, these, t- these take dudes, take these, these, these guys' are, phones away, man. Yeah, these dudes are on like posting their war crimes on TikTok. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. I saw a video like yesterday. This dude is just has a machine gun and is just shooting at this freaking apartment building in in, in Gaza. Yeah. Like for no reason, it's just doing it. Just for the gram, just for the, literally. Yeah, so they give anyone anyone there who wants to kill, they just give them guns. So I guess, I guess counter to my what the point I just made, um, maybe maybe we would because we're like oh, these guys are freaking incompetent. <laughs> like America would be like <laughs> Israel's freaking incompetent. They must be incompetent. Like even all this stuff with Hamas and all that. I'm like brother, you are funded very well. But at the same time, you're funded super duper. I mean, well. did, didn't did, didn't something like this happen already? The Seven Day War or whatever with Israel? Yeah, it was different generations. Different generations. Um, I mean, those. I only did a little bit of research on the Seven that, Day that War. W- that was like, but a, th- that was the a, Middle East looked bad. That was though. an oppressed people back then. Those is, those like Jews that were fighting in the Seven Day War. Yeah, they, 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 but they had prep time. To be fair, they had prep time. But also, there was like. There's like a different kind of grit that yeah, comes. There this, I think this report is from today. Israel pulled troops out of southern Gaza. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> he's he's withdrawn all except one brigade brigade from southern Gaza. Uh, anyways, I can't find I can't find the Lebanon thing. I need to l- probably look for more specific stuff. Yeah, I, I know we're recording right now. So yeah, fine. but yeah, so like you know, Israel won the Seven Day War, but when they attacked Lebanon, they got clapped pretty hard. So it's not just like Israel is just like this incongruent army. As you can see, like the whole. I mean, that, that's stuff, true. There's, like there's also a difference in war in your in your land, like on your territory, like on your turf versus mm. la- like war somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, those are like two different kinds of wars, basically. Um, so like take that into account as well. Yeah. So uh, other in other news, you know, I've been following the Sneeko, um, dude. I'm so happy with this man being Muslim, bro. It's just so funny because this guy was hating on Islam and that he is like super duper Muslim. Um, he was actually streaming in Medina, though. Mm-hmm. I thought it was funny. He was streaming in Medina and like Saudi police just like cut off his stream or like kicked him out of like the area he was in because he had tattoos. What, do you mean, what area was he in? Do you know, like was he I think in, like, he was close like the prophet's grave. I don't know. So. The prophet's grave? Yeah. Or like the masjid of the prophet? Like. Mm, not entirely sure, actually. No, maybe like more like probably the Master of the Prophet. It looks like Master of Kufa behind him, like that yeah, was a Master of Nebuli, maybe. Yeah, I just know like the Saudi police came right. He was like with one of these uh one of these other Muslim influencers guys we've seen before. Um, and the police were like, "Bro, like, we doing?" And the guy was explaining like, "Oh, he's Muslim. He's a revert." But they're like upset with his tattoos. Mm. Um, right. So like it made me think about. I thought it would be interesting for us, right? Because like, um. It, it kind of talks about the commentary of, like, how, like, you know, man, we see these people convert, right? And, like, people convert, they have good intentions. And, like, what brings them to Islam is the things that we're doing right. But then, like, I just think it's important to point out how much we're doing so wrong. Like, why would you kick someone out of a masjid for having tattoos? Like, why why isn't the first thing that goes through your head saying... He got them before he became Muslim. To be fair, to be fair, if you went to a certain bathhouses in Japan, yeah, you're also getting kicked out because you're dead. Dude. Well, so like, that, that's like uh, my point is like, there's like a religious component here, but then there's also like a cultural thing as well, because um, I have a hard time believing that people of the same madhab in America would react the same way to like someone being in a holy site, right? To a, co- a convert, to them seeing a convert with tattoos, like the context is like completely. Well, no, I I disagree because it's like you know, this is a holy site. This is supposed to be a place for like everyone, right? Like you have to be, come on, like you're you're near the Kaaba where every Muslim on earth comes to. You know, 
you got to get used to seeing other looking Muslims. Like, how are you that close minded, right? Not to say tattoos aren't haram. <laughs> I mean, who knew? Uh, so yeah. According to our, at least our school of thought, mm-hmm. you know. So I think Sneeko is probably going to get ro- uh, roped into some like Shia debates or something. I mean, he always debates and he always gets, he, you know, he's so open minded. Like, you you're see, he's too open minded. He's going to talk to somebody who's did like, you Shia. see he's, um, his speaker's corner debate with a Christian dude? No. It was so bad. But anyways, Sneeko, I, I, I say this, to, I heard this from another streamer, and I said this to Matty, and Matty disagrees, but I think Sneeko is one of those people that is so open-minded that their mind, their head has literally opened up and their brain has fallen out. <laughs> um, and so, and I think Joe Rogan sometimes <laughs> suffers from this too, <laughs> which is like, yeah. I'm so open-minded to different ideas right that i can be convinced of almost anything <laughs> even if it doesn't make sense <laughs> so that's my only that's like my main that's like my main gripe with sneeko also maybe things are changing now um but similar to andrew tate i was a little bit skeptical of like how serious the conversion thing was um especially when it doesn't really seem like there's been much of like a behavioral change I've and seen of course some. I've been following on Twitter. I see like he's actually been trying to improve and stuff. He's like, I mean, yeah, he still tweets stupid stuff, but like, he it's definitely t- he's definitely toned down the ignorance and even like the people he's having on stream and stuff. Like, he's not from what I've seen, like hanging out with OnlyFans chicks and all like different kind of stuff. He's like trying to curse less. Like, it's it's wholesome vibes. Um, yeah, it was funny. There was a clip. He was like, my mom was watching me on stream and she 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 heard me curse, and she was like. Aren't you supposed to be not cursing during Ramadan? Like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, you're right. Ah. That's funny. <laughs> I heard something like, there's like a clip of like Andrew Tate. I, I don't know, like, I'm, I don't follow Andrew Tate, like, like on like whatever socials. Like, I, I see the re uploaded things, right? But like, I think he was like with Aiden Ross or something, and he was like drinking or eating, and he was like fast, fasting. And Aiden, I think, was like, yo, ain't you supposed to be fasting Ramadan? Like, <laughs> like i'm not entirely sure though <laughs> like you know maybe it's out of context whatever that's crazy <laughs> but i don't know like it drew for sure i'm like letting time tell i'm like nothing about this guy to me is more convinced and who cares what i think right like it's all up to god but i do um i'm writing a script about it like right like about influencers who are hijacking islam to like just avoid social karma yeah i mean i i, I wrote something about it too <coughs> that's what you did shout out to hussein's blog <laughs> Links um below yeah i wrote something about it too and, and and you really can't come to like a hard conclusion about these people's intentions right but it's just like i'm, I'm getting the flavor of grift like i'm getting <laughs> the grifty flavor <laughs> the essence what is that, of some grift? The essence of grift, <laughs> grift? Do you know what i was thinking about i was thinking about this in the shower right i was like trying to like put my thoughts around this i was like how like what's a good way to explain like my thought process on this right because i know you know like allah's all merciful you come to our dean like dude like no one's perfect right because there's a big aspect of that right like that's not and that's not like a point we should undersell right like we believe allah is like literally all merciful we believe if like for our own actually asks to be forgiven except like right before his death allah would have you know bestowed upon his I mean, he was given opportunity after opportunity yeah. after opportunity. Like, so, yeah. So, like, with all that being said, though, it's like, imagine this. This is, how I, this is how I think about these influencers. If Ted Bundy was in the middle of his trial, he had just been convicted of his murders and rapes. Middle of his trial, you know, it's all being broadcast on TV. He comes into court with a Quran, and he's wearing a kufi. And now he's like Muhammad Bundy. And um, you know, he starts talking about how it's converted to Islam and how it's like a base religion, all this stuff, right? What would your reaction be? And my question is like, who, I'm not to say Allah won't forgive him. But isn't this odd? <laughs> <laughs> and, and are, are you, we not and allowed to you, criticize and behavior are you forgiving still? him of all of his previous sins because now he's, he's taking shahada? Yeah. And obviously, oh, Tate, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. You can't bring up that he was a rapist and a murderer because he's a Muslim now. Like that has that's completely irrelevant to anything. If you think, if that's the if that's the answer, this is like, if the answer is yes, basically, yeah. You can understand why. 
historical perspectives are the way they are. Let me mm. let me put it that. Mm. Way. I like um, that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, because it's like it doesn't like what a person does doesn't actually matter. Yeah, and th- and then now now Muslims have fallen into the same trap of Christians, right? Where it's like, well, God is going to forgive us no matter what. So it's like we can't really see your actions in you being a Christian because you go to a church however much and you know Jesus died for you, etc. Um, it's not to say like I'm not saying Andrew Tate is Ted Bundy, right? But it's like I'm giving that extreme example to give a point. Yeah. yeah. Like there is despicable behavior, right? And like I don't think we should just, like do Sean King converse with Islam. Sean King's a grifter. Like screw that guy. He's a grifter. He st- he steals money, and he also he also builds clout off of movements. Yeah. Like before his account got deleted on Instagram, I was seeing so cringy. Every post he makes, even like when it's about Gaza or whatnot, this guy would be like. He always insert himself in it somehow. I mean, always attention yeah, to him. Yeah, screw that guy. You also, I mean, they also went him in uh, Khalid Bay dude when I like that freaking yeah. tour, and it's like it's not exactly clear if like this money's going to Palestine or is this money going to you guys or like just grifter, grifter, grifter. <laughs> um, so it's yeah, yeah. To your point, and again, like you don't have to be. To be fair, it does not take a convert. Like it's not a specific issue with converts being grifters. There are plenty of born Muslims who right now are either engaging in grifty behavior or just outright grifters. Yeah. We talked about one of them on that on the podcast already. Matthew. Matthew Tajani. Yeah. Yeah. Um, whether like you fall down that he's a complete grifter or not, at least some of the stuff in his that he's offering is grifty ish. Yeah, grift grifty behavior. Um, getting kicked out now though, so you gotta wrap it up. Aha. Uh-huh. This has been thoughtful banter. Yeah. So uh thank you guys for Peace watching out. this episode. We'll see you guys later. Peace out.